The next speaker we have is Michelle Evans. She is a doctoral student at the University of Georgia, where she is a member of the Community Mapping Lab. Her work explores the spatial patterns and inequality in mosquito-borne uh, disease such as dengue in urban areas. She tries to use force and open data in her work as much as possible, and nothing makes her as happy as finding a brand new data set to play with. She is here to talk about mapping mosquitoes using OSM and open data to identify disease patterns. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm Michelle. I'm a doctoral student. I work in the community mapping lab at the University of Georgia. And today I'm going to talk to you about a project that we're just starting off um, trying to predict dengue hotspots in Bangalore. So dengue is a disease that's transmitted by mosquitoes and it can cause flu-like symptoms and even death. And unfortunately, it's been increasing since the 1990s and shows no signs of slowing down. But the risk of dengue is not evenly spread across the world. Most of the dengue cases happen in the tropics, and India is actually one of the, that has one of the highest burdens of dengue in the world. So if you look at this map that has the global risk of dengue, you can see where the burden is. And if you kind of compare it to the map on the bottom that shows the global urbanization patterns, you might notice that there's actually a lot of overlap in these areas that have high risk of dengue and these more urban, densely populated areas. And this is because the mosquitoes that carry dengue really like to live in the cities. They actually prefer to bite people over other animals that are around, and they've adapted over centuries to live in the containers that are found right next to where we live. So this can be things like trash, coconut husks, even um, cement curing tanks on construction sites, and these are all very common in cities. So given um, the kind of rapid urbanization that we're seeing in the world, we put a lot of work into trying to predict where dengue outbreaks might happen. Um, so I'm just gonna go over this briefly because it could be a whole talk in itself, but basically we use kind of um, correlational statistics to relate environmental variables such as temperature, rainfall, vegetation, to data that we have on mosquito presence and data on dengue cases. And because dengue is often underreported, we don't have case data for everywhere, and this allows us to kind of make a smooth um, risk map and identify hotspots in areas where we might not have data for. And this works really well at the level of the country or a region. But what about a city? So cities have a high amount of block by block or intra-urban variation. So here we have a map put out by the IDFC of population density in New Delhi, and then a map of dengue cases also in New Delhi by one of my colleagues. And you can see that both have a lot of variation. Dengue cases in particular might have one area where there's a lot of cases and then a neighborhood that's right next to it that's relatively <coughs> disease free. And so it's really hard to use uh, the methods that we've developed for the other uh, kind of global analysis to predict disease in cities. And this is for two reasons. So first, the environmental data that we tend to use is remotely sensed data from satellites. And this is often too coarse for this kind of fine scale variation that we see in the city. Second, cities really have a lot of social dynamics that are happening. And so just relying on data from a satellite or data that's even input by a volunteer from really far away might not get at these social aspects. And so that makes it hard to predict the drivers of the disease as we're just able to look at maybe not even causational predictors. And so we use OpenStreetMap and crowdsource data as well as some community mapping or participatory mapping methods to address these two problems. So OpenStreetMap can provide a lot of data that we might not get from remotely sensed data. This can be things like building height, highway materials, or even drainage systems that we wouldn't otherwise have access to. The other benefit is we can use crowdsource data. So if any of you are familiar with uh, the interactive flood mapping that was, has been used in the uh, floods from South India, this can be really helpful to help get people's input on what they're seeing around them to predict where water is. And similarly, we want to know where water is uh, on a much, much smaller scale. So we call it the geography of puddles. Community mapping, on the other hand, helps us get at a data, a type of data that we've actually talked about a lot this weekend, but that isn't normally collected through OpenStreetMap, and that's stories. So we can walk around and see maybe a drainage ditch that's clogged where we see mosquitoes growing, but we don't know why it's there. 
So by working with members of the community, we can go around with them doing walk-along interviews and sketch mapping and get an idea of not only where this habitat is, but why it's there, and start working with people to have a discussion about what we can do to change it. <coughs> is it a policy that needs to change? Is there maybe some kind of zoning law that has to happen? So we're starting a project next year um, trying to implement these ideas in Bangalore, and it's part of a three-stage project. So this project is mapping the mosquito habitat. We're also doing some ecological work trying to quantify the densities of mosquitoes. And then we're going to be putting all of this data into some epidemiological models to predict dengue risk across the city. And hopefully by doing this, we'll be able to switch from a very reactive vector control method that we're currently using to try and actually fog areas and do prevention measures before people are getting sick with diseases. And with that, I'd just like to thank everyone for listening. Um, this is my contact information. Feel free to find me at a break, but also send me an email or a message on Twitter or something. Thank you.